Hello, welcome to Get In Nerdy in 30. I'm your host, Aaron, and this is Andrea. Oop, over here. Hi. Oh, oh, over there. <laughs> and this is a new broadcast brought to you by Total Nerd Takeover. Um, yeah, exactly. So if any of you are like me, I very much am a very busy person. So I don't got a lot of time on my hands. So the point of this podcast is just to talk about nerd stuff for about 30 minutes, and then you can move on your, with your day. Hey! Okay. And, Andrea, happy Star Trek Day. Happy Star Trek Day, Aaron. Thanks. And so, if you haven't guessed, today's uh, episode is about Star Trek. Live long and prosper. My one finger is broken, so I can't like, really do that sometimes. Um, 55 years ago today... Star Trek first aired. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. Something totally not younger than me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. There you go. <laughs> I uh, can't say yes. I, I'm very younger than Star Trek, the beginning of Star Trek. So that's good. Um, so what drew you to Star Trek when you got into it? So I remember watching it with my with my dad when I was younger. But I didn't really understand it. I just knew it was something dad watched, right? Yeah. And it was cool. Um, but when Next Generation came out, my mom was like, they brought Star Trek back. And I was like, what? And so that's when they also had, like, right before that, had re started releasing some of the movies, you know, with the old crew and stuff. And I just, it, it encaptured me. Like it was a every Sunday night. Don't call. Don't call. No, leave me alone. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was very similar. I grew up in the next generation phase, so I was not privy to the original series. Um, but for me, like I was a very lonely kid. Like I yeah. didn't have a lot of friends, and so when Star Trek happened, I was like, Oh my god, these can be my friends! And so every week it hey. was watching this tv show captured my imagination of this like utopian society and you're like you're just exploring space i loved it it was amazing oh exactly and one of the things like i've always felt this way but i think like today getting ready i was just like what's something that stands out about star trek more than anything else is that they have a way the writers have always seemed to have a way to talk about current problems in this era in the future and about how they've changed, but maybe not changed a lot, like racism between the different the different races of people on different planets. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's amazing, yeah. you know that it can show like humans and Klingons go to war like against each other. Exactly. And that's what a lot of different races, you know, do in the country. And it's, it's still a problem in the future and different ways that they handle those problems. I think is that's something that I just think speaks over the, you know, speaks through if you're if you read into that kind of stuff like that well yeah like looking back now i'm like when i was younger i was like oh my god these explorers there's meeting all these new aliens and all that stuff and then i look back and i'm like they were gentrifying the universe <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and they literally were like we're gonna take over and you're gonna live by our rules and you might still have your culture and stuff but you're you're with us so i'm like wow well, you're basically one planet at a time, taking it over. Right. You know, and the, the Klingons, they went to war for, I was it, like 200 years or something like that. And, right. Yeah. And Worf was the first Klingon in, in uh, the academy and all that stuff. So, yeah. Right. I loved Worf. Oh, oh my God. I, I have to say, next to, and of course, I'm that age bracket, next to, next to Wesley Crusher, it has to be Worf. <laughs> yeah. Michael Dorn is amazing. He is like okay, so watching Next Gen, yes, 
Riker was the seductress, I guess, is a good way mm-hmm. of doing it. But like in season like six and seven, you're like, Worf. Well, Where hello you? there. Excuse and, me. Hello, sir. And then he went over to Deep Space Nine. I was like, hello, Worf. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. I was so happy when he came to Deep Space Nine. Right. So, <laughs> um, do you have a favorite captain? Or can you rank? It's it hard. Three? Okay. It, it's hard because so I love the original Kirk, you know, the slightly older guy, like right after he became a captain. But I love Chris Pine's Kirk too. Yeah. I, I think he does a phenomenal job. I mean, they're very much, he's, I think he was the right actor for the job, but I will always and forever, it will, I think Picard is number one for me. Okay. Yeah. Little, like the, it's, the it's, guy. it's, the, right. it's, yeah. <laughs> I very much love Picard. There's something about, he is a sexy older man. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he is. is. He is a sexy older man. Steel. He yeah. yes, he is still an attractive man. But like, so I watched Next Generation. I watched Deep Space Nine, Voyager. Jane Wayne was a badass. I loved her. She was a yeah. bad ass. But you know, I would still say Picard is. He's he's up there. I, I didn't watch the first the original series, so I, I can't really vote Kirk. I do like I do like Chris Pine in the movies. He does it, he does an amazing job. Um, I was kind of sad that they canceled the fourth movie. Yeah. I think it's I think it was probably just going to hit a little too close to home because it apparently had something to do about with like a deadly virus or something like that. And I was like, oh that wow, really does, that really does like hit a little too probably a little too, like not at the, not this time. Not, it's not a good this choice. Time. It's yes. a good choice. Bad time to make a movie like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. But who knows if they they do it in the future? If they do, I will gladly be in line. Oh, absolutely. And we'll absolutely. watch that again. And I will say, uh, Cumberbatch. As when he was that second movie, I was just like, okay. You Would you are... like to get married? <laughs> oh my God. But have you seen the new one, Discovery? Have you seen that? No, one? I have not. Okay. So, Discovery, amazing. Um, right now, they are somehow they got transported 900 years in the future. So like past wow. everything. So it's very interesting. I definitely recommend it if you get a chance. Um, Star Trek also has an animated series. Did you know that? So back when I was, I think, in high school, junior high, high school, Nickelodeon had a cartoon, an animated series. Yes. And I watched that a lot. So they that have that have one. Been, that may have been where it first really got ingrained with okay. me was watching the series and then when the tv when next generation came out then it was that was a wrap okay. for me like so i never saw the animated series the original one but there's a new one that is on also on paramount called the lower decks have you heard of this one mm-hmm. so it's animated 30 minute episodes totally cool but it's not about the bridge crew because all the other shows are usually about the bridge crew. Right. It's about the lower deck people, like all the people that are like the inside. The housekeepers. Are exactly. Yeah. Like who cleans, who keeps the ship clean? Who does the, so it's all about this group of like, I wouldn't call them outcasts, but they're the, they're the ones that defy the prime directive a lot. Mm-hmm. And so um, they, yeah, it's about them, and it's it's pretty funny. And there's shenanigans. And there's shena- there's shenanigans abound in that show. It's a good oh, thirty yes. minutes. And they have like Will Riker in it. Like they have like some of these people voice the, the characters and stuff like that. So oh my it, god, that's cool. amazing. Yeah. So. So I have a question for you. Okay. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna limit you out of. No. Okay. Two favorite storylines. From the next generation. Uh, from next generation. So probably well, the one that's the most like iconic, I think, is 
data trying to become more human. Yeah. Like that alone just talks to about what's what constitute a human being. Mm -hmm. Because like for me, data was more human than some humans. Like he yeah. he had the empathy, he <laughs> get horrible dad jokes if you look at it, the, them now those would be considered dad jokes you know? totally totally <laughs> the worst dad jokes ever um but oh and just and I, love I, mean to... I do oh my god <laughs> everything he does yes but just that alone him trying to strive to be more human and to see growth and i think that's just inspirational in a way and it really kind yeah. of makes me think nowadays if you think about it this was the 80s when this was going mm -hmm. on nowadays it's like are like we have all this intelligent ai are they actually human are they not like what does it yeah. mean you know what i mean so like a lot of the stuff that they did back then you're seeing that stuff going on now you know and a lot yeah. of the technology that you saw on the shows like the ipad or mm -hmm. the you know the the music one i i i phone all those different ones those are things that you saw from the series well and then like and even in next generation but you go back even further to the original series they had their little their 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 comms their communicator yeah. that looked like a flip phone exactly so it was just it was just inspirational i think um second storyline I'm a Will Whedon fan. I, I enjoyed a lot of the Wesley Crusher stuff. Yeah. Um, I really, the only thing I really didn't like is how they ended his character in the show. Right. Because I was like, it, it just really, it just didn't like, but it just didn't go. You know what I mean? The Traveler yeah. and then he became the new Traveler. And I don't know. But I know there's a lot of probably back and forth stuff probably. going on behind the scenes and he probably wanted to go to college and all that kind of stuff. So I get it, but I feel like they just abruptly ended his character. He was it did. Gone. It did. And I think that was a problem. It didn't slowly progress. Yeah. And so we didn't get to see the arc of his story. He was in his arc and then it just went kablam. Exactly. Like, and so that was a little bit of bad writing, I think. Yeah, exactly. Have is there any characters that you wish that they would revive, like now? Tasha. Tasha. Tasha Yar. Really? Okay. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. What was it about Tasha for you? She was the woman warrior. Okay. Um, up until recently the couple last couple of years i've always had guy friends and and hung out and done guy stuff you know i mean yeah. not for any reason i just don't get along with a lot of girls i don't deal well with the whiny girly bitchy thing excuse my language <laughs> but uh so hanging out with guys was always a lot more comfortable for me and because i was kind of nerdy and geeky like i didn't have to worry about being so awkward but she was she was the uh, she was fierce yes like just fierce and it and it's an inspiration you know a lot of the women in history and in tv and movies that inspire me are fierce women like her not necessarily always a fighter a literal fighter but you yeah. know I will always remember that episode where she got kidnapped and she had to fight with that glove on against the other, the wife of the, the leader stuff. I will always remember that episode. And she mm -hmm. was like, no, I will fight her. I got this. <laughs> I was like, Fact. you go. Okay. <laughs> but no, I definitely can agree. She was, she was definitely a fierce warrior, but if I, if I, I have always, I've always said that if they ever did a Star Trek show, I would like to see something that took place at the Academy. 
Like even, yes. if it, even if it was like Sean Luke in the younger years at the Academy or yes. like, I just think that would be fascinating. Cause you see, you've seen them in space. You've seen them in the Delta quadrant. You've seen them on a, a space station. You've seen them on other planets. Why don't you see them at the Academy? Like that is and the only simple. exposure we've had to the Academy was a little bit with Will Wheaton. Yes. And then the little bit in the more recent movies. Yes. And that really wasn't very much. Yeah, there was a little bit in, in the new series Picard. But again, it was very much like a flashback of like, here's the Academy. But um, yeah, the Academy is like one of those like mystery things. You're like, okay, you go to the Academy and then all of a sudden you're an incense. You know, like, I wish right. they, would, they would take that and do a storyline more of that. That's, like, probably my one go back to. Um, if there was any other characters I would love to see revived would be Guinan. Would yes. Be character. She was a fascinating creature. Yes. Like her, her alien was a fascinating creature. And I know they did a movie about kind of about it but i would love to see like that yeah you're right you're right you're absolutely right on that um her addition to the show i think brought more than they ever anticipated yeah like i think they knew it was going to be good because it was a whoopee but i don't think they realized that whoopee being in star trek brought in probably millions or thousands of brand new lovers to Star Trek. Yeah. I think, so for me, like, I sometimes felt like Guinan gave Picard better advice than Troy ever did. I loved Counselor Troy. Yes. But I feel like she was just a minor character that happened to be part of the bridge crew. Kind of like Beverly Crusher. Yes. They were a minor character that just happened to be part of the bridge crew, and so they had one scene in every episode kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas I yeah. felt like and, Guy didn't actually. And I love Troy too yeah. because she was beautiful and she was smart and, you know, she was an empath and all of this, you know, like I love all of that about her character. However, once her and Riker got together, then that became the only storyline where they were concerned. Exactly. She was just the love interest. That's it. Yeah. But, my and I don't think that character. was fair to her character because I think that character could have been so much more. My favorite character of all time, though, any show, any series, walks on a Troy. She was yeah. by far my favorite favorite character. Why? By far, I don't. I just feel like she was one of those women that was like, "I'm just going to tell you like it is. I don't take me for me. If not." Kick rocks, basically. Right. No, she. I just loved her character. Did you know that was Gene Roddenberry's wife? Yes. Did you know she also? Did you know she also voiced the ship's computer? No. She was the voice of the ship's computer. Is that not awesome? I know, right? But no, hands down, love her. And I loved because I also felt like it was at a time where like my sister and my mom weren't getting along a lot. So I I was like, Oh, I see this a lot in this show. Like you guys are just not like each other. Right. But I mean, and that's the thing, like it shows you like real relationships and problems. And even though it's however many hundred years in the future, you know, it's, it's still, the problems are still relevant in relationships and how people communicate. And that's, 99% 99% of what's wrong in the world is we don't know how to communicate. Exactly. Like, I feel like we are at a precipice with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I feel like Star Trek is like telling the future in a way. I know? do. I agree with that. I think data storyline and then my, this is weird. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who agree with me that from next generation, the um the favorite storyline is the borg yeah and here's here's why it's my favorite one it shows the dangers of full like automation right mm-hmm. of going from human 
to electronic and assimilated in the whole nine yards. But when they assimilate data, they made him the one thing he absolutely did not want to be. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that that whole battle is a warning to us to be careful with our technology. Like, it's great. We have apps and iPads and computers and all of these things. That's how you and I are talking right now. Exactly. However, we can't make them the be all end all. Exactly. You know? Yeah, we still need to have this face to face. We still need mm -hmm. to, you know, go out for walks and all that kind of stuff. I totally, I totally Facts. get it. Borg is one of my favorite all time storylines. Like, yeah. love them. Locutus of Borg, when he became the Borg, I was like, oh my God, Captain right, like regards the Borg now. What's going to happen? Right. <laughs> I could sit and watch just those, gla those couple episodes over. Mm -hmm over and over again anything with the borg like when star trek did the movie with the borg first contact i well i will watch the borg fight scene and i'm like okay i'm good i'm just, good i got to see my borg i'm good <laughs> so i'm gonna share another thing that's my favorite that i got from the original cartoon okay and i'm gonna tell a story i'll make it short i saw the trouble with tribbles episode in the cartoon okay. which was if anybody knows anything about the original cartoon it literally was exactly the episodes from the season okay. from the first series just and animation. they just would do an, an animation which was cool so i had never seen the trouble with tribbles actual episode i saw the cartoon well then i don't know later i ended up seeing the actual show and <laughs> My grandmother used to watch QVC all the time. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. And they did, during the next generation and a lot of the movies coming out, they did this whole thing where they had all this stuff. Like I used to have a live long and prosper, like lapel pin. Um, I might still have that, actually. I should have looked. Um, but they had a pink furry thing. <laughs> Looked like a just a, like a ball that okay. had a had, it, you put it had, you put batteries in the middle of it when you turned it on it vibrated on the floor like a triple and made the noise. I loved that thing. <laughs> yes, I love the triples. <laughs> Don't judge me. I'm not judging, but I just picture this like wig just flopping off. That's what it looks like. Like it might look more like a kind of like one of those pink furry house heels, you know, the little house slippers. Yeah. Uh is there any series that you just were like, I could they should never have made that? No, I just as I got older, I kind of steered away from a lot of the Star Trek stuff and became interested in other stuff stuff stuff. Yes. And um so I don't really have an opinion about Voyager. Okay. I watched a little bit of Deep Space Nine. Um, but really, I'm a next-gen kind of girl. Okay. Picard uh, and and now the Lower Decks are on my on my right. radar. So. Well, I, I didn't actually watch Deep Space Nine until the pandemic last year. Oh, wow. I was, I was like, you know what? Netflix, we're gonna we're just gonna start these. I have I have time. Let's just let's just start right. these. And so I finished all of Next Gen again. And I was like, let's start Deep Space Nine. I watched Deep Space Nine. I was like, okay, let's go on to Voyager. You know, we'll we'll do this. And I was like, I'll end with the the original because I was like, I the original to me, like it was that like 60s hokey type of so I was like, I, I mm do that so I'm like I will watch that last I got through like season three of Voyager and I was just like I'm done I can't I can't yeah I'm Star Trek out <laughs> I like Voyager I really liked because it was something different they were in the Delta Quadrant closer to the Borg trying to get home like yeah like awesome female captain Janeway badass love her um but I feel like around season three the writing just went and took a left and I was just like I can't 
I can't, I just can't do this, you know? Right. And, and I agree. Like I kind of, and I mean, you know, and I know that we've talked about maybe doing, you know, on the, on Dr. Who, the writing changed with this last doctor. And I just, I can't get into it. Okay. And other people are like, oh, you know, but I, it's just not grabbing me. Yeah. And so that's the thing when you change writers that far into a series, sometimes it, it doesn't work out yeah, the right definitely. way. I will say I also, I, one character I love from Voyager besides Janeway was um, Seven of Nine. Like this whole like, borg that gets transformed back into a human and all she knows is borg life so how is she going to be get her humanity back like that is a cool storyline but i feel like they just weren't able to pull it off and i feel like a lot of the bridge crew didn't really get the story arcs like next gen or deep right. storyline, you know so i feel like yeah. it's 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 still up there as something as one of in the top five but it's just one of those that i was like i can't i can't do this so, so tell me this because i think we talked about it before so i heard that P picard strayed a little bit away from the normal concept of star trek yes. where normally star trek every episode was its individual story mm -hmm. there may have been a little bit of continuing like the board come in you know like yeah. hints and stuff but for the most part every story was a separate adventure yes exactly and that picard was not yes so like if you if you compare it to next gen there was still the storyline for example of data trying to figure out his humanity Mm -hmm. like that was an overall theme, but like at the end of each episode, there was a fin there was a, a fin finish to it. Right. Picard has taken the model of like how seasons of shows are now, and it's like it ends in a cliffhanger, and then you pick it up in the next episode. And so, like, I feel like it's really hard in that style for Star Trek. Yeah. Discovery has done it a little bit better, I think, but they still do the each episode. There's an ending to it, but there's still that overall theme. Whereas Picard literally was, here's this theme, but there's no end to it. We're, we're going to end on a cliffhanger, and the next episode we're going to pick it up. So, but yeah, so it's a little different. But on I on a soap opera. -y. Yeah, I it, but I still love Picard. That's yeah, my guy, love him. Facts. Have, and he's done some he amazing isn't he work. like his 70s he's in like his 70s isn't he yeah man geez to still be i able mean to i remember i saw him oh i should have googled it it was a movie back in the early 90s where about hiv and aids oh. was it uh the only one i remember from then was the angels among us or something like that uh, Angels in America. No, oh, okay. I saw that in a in a off, like in a side theater in New Orleans. Whoa, mind blowing. No, it was something party, but it was basically about friends who were kept going to like wakes and like the like gathering after a funeral for friends. Okay. That died of HIV, and I remember there was a little bit of to do about, about it. him doing that movie, and I'm pretty sure that Patrick Stewart said, "F you, I'm yeah. doing it anyway," which was great. But it, even his work in X Men is phenomenal. Yeah, exactly, I I loved him in X Men. He is he to me will always be Charles Xavier. Also, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Picard and Charles <laughs> Xavier. Those two characters are so iconic and they're so similar. Yeah, that honestly, I don't think anybody else could have played Charles Xavier at that age other than him. If they had waited or cast somebody different, it may not have been as good. Exactly, I I agree. They're like, I know they do they, and we're veering off a little bit, but I know they do the 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 first class and they do all that stuff and they make the young Xavier, but like there's something iconic about Patrick Stewart playing Charles Xavier. 
And I, yes. hands down, the first X Men will always be the best yes. X Men, you know. So, but we're getting on that time, Andrea. 30 minutes. Hi. Yay. Any Yay. final words for everything or anybody or the people out there or any final words about Star Trek? Live long and prosper. Nice. Well, I'm going to end with the most iconic thing that uh, Star Trek ever said. Okay, Randy? Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. It's continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new lives and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. That, was, that I look Still forward gives to that. Goosebumps. Every Still gives me goosebumps. exactly every Sunday. That was I looked forward to those words, and me so. Too. I leave that with you all, everybody. I hope you guys have a good night, day, morning, wherever you are. Um, we'll be back soon with a new episode of Getting Nerdy in 30. And Andrea, oh, this way again, <laughs> will also be hosting her own show with Tina T. You want to talk about it a little bit before we? Um, it is called Fact Sandwich. Um, I say that a lot. Um, like a lot of people say facts. And I'll go, that's a fact sandwich. So it's going to be um, kind of some social, but from a different place. Um, I'm going to start out looking at the healthcare industry okay. and talking about different, different communities, marginalized communities, veterans that are affected by the way healthcare is set up in the U.S. currently. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah. I look so it's going to be a little serious, but I mean, we're going to try to have fun. It's just, yeah. you know, only way to, only way to get the information out there is with a fact sandwich. Fact sandwich. Well, I look forward to it, and y'all have a good night. And as Picard would say, engage. Engage.